Hey everyone, so we are heading on to question five now, right? And this is the last question of this paper. Um, and let's just jump in and see what it says. So it says that this is a pie chart, right? That shows the total recycling and composting of material in 2015. So it says the total amount that was recycled is 91.16 million tons. That's important. We're probably gonna use it later. But then what it's done what they've given us, right, is they've taken this 91 million point one six and split it into its percentage breakup, right? So it's saying 49.7% of this 91.16 million tons is paper and paperboard, right? 3.3% is glass, and then there's various other categories. Then there's this other category, right, which is 11.2% of the 91.16 million. But they've shown us a further pie chart, right, where they've split this category into its sort of subcategories, right? So um, they're saying in the subcategory, there's sort of rubber, wood, food, print, waste, cartridges, and textiles, right? So this pie chart equals 11.2 because it's an expansion of other. But this pie chart equals 100%. And that's probably going to be quite important when we do the questions, Okay. So let's move on to the first question, right? So they told us to answer these, to use the pie chart above and answer the questions. So 5.1.1 says write down one possible data collection method, right? That was used to gather the above data. So I've written a couple over here. So it could, you could go, you could do a survey where you ask people how much they recycle. You could do a questionnaire, which is similar to a survey, right? But you could do that sort of, um, Verbally, you could go have people like conducting the questionnaires, that sort of thing. And then you have observation. So you could have someone like actually like sort of counting, you know, okay, that's paper, how many tons of paper today, that sort of thing, right? So that's the different forms you could have. Observation would probably be the most accurate um, because you get sort of numerical data because you get like this many tons where surveying might be sort of, you know, someone guesses how much they recycle. But these are just different methods. Okay, so that is just sort of like a general knowledge, checking a bit of sort of learning work there. So let's move on now to 5.1.2. So 5.1.2 says calculate the percentage allocated for yard trimmings. Okay, so now what we see here is that in this 100% pie chart, we have all these percentages for the different categories, but we don't have one for yard trimmings, right? But we know that the whole pie graph must add up to 100%, okay? Because it's basically splitting the total amount of recycling into different categories. So if we say 100% subtract all of these other categories, we'll just be left with yard trimmings and the yard trimmings percentage. So let's go and do that calculation. Okay, so we say 100% because that's how much the total is. And then I'm saying minus. Now I'm opening a bracket here. Okay, and I'm going to put all 11.2 is the other category. Then I'm going to put the paper category. Then I'm going to put the glass category, right? Just see, these are all the different categories. Then I'm going to put the metal category. And I'm going to put the plastic category, okay? So now if I add all of that together, that'll give all the other sort of subsections of the graph, right, of the pie graph. And if I subtract that from 100%, it will leave me with the textiles. Now, you might be thinking, well, Mark, you said subtract, but now you've put the, now you've put addition, right? But the addition is within the bracket, right? And remember with bod mass, we have to do brackets first. So let me show you how that works, right? So if I add all of that stuff together, I really need to clean my calculator. Goodness gracious me. Okay, 49 plus 3.3, plus 9, plus 3.4. Okay, so you add all of those, all of the brackets together. Okay, and that is 76.6%. Okay, then you say, oh, just, just be very careful, guys. You can see I made a bit of a weird mistake here. 
So this 76.6, right? You might be thinking, but that doesn't give me a percentage sign. So when you actually type this into your calculator, what I would do is not put in all the percentage signs the way that I have. I would just put in the numbers, right? So what, what I did previously is not wrong. You just have to times it by 100 to get it into percentage, right? So you see there that it's actually 76.6, and that's what the percentage is. So don't write 0.766%, uh, right? Because then it's going to give you a really big percentage allocated to plast um, to yard trimmings, but you actually just need to convert this, right? If you times it by 100, it will give you 76%, right? 76.6%. This is quite important. How we type things into our calculator makes a difference, right? So what I did is I just typed in the numbers and it gave me 76.6 and then I put in my percent, okay? So then what we do is we say 100 minus 76.6 and that will give me 23.4%, right? So just remember that when you get a decimal, right, Saying um, 1 is the same as saying 100%, right? Saying 0 0.75 is the same as saying 75%, okay? You must remember how to convert between decimals and percentages, right? So 0 0.766 over there equals 76.6%. So don't get confused. Just make sure that you understand what you're inputting into your calculator and what your out should be, output should be, right? So that's your final answer there, okay? That's how much of the the yard of the um total recycling is actually yard trimmings okay so that is that then if we go to 5.1.3 it says determine the percentage allocated for textiles so now we're going to do a similar calculation to what we did in the previous question but instead of working out yard trimmings right we're going to be working out this textiles over here it's important here, though, to note that this smaller pie chart is 11.2% in total, right? Because it's only this little other category, where that one equal to 100%. So here we have to say 11.2% minus, and then you add all the categories that we're given, right? Because again, if we take other and we subtract all the other categories from it, right, all this all the categories that we have, like the wood, rubber, food, and printer cartridges, all we're left with as a subsection of other is this textiles, right? And then we'll get the percentage that is textiles. Okay, cool. So let's put that into our calculator. So I'm just gonna add my brackets first because remember, I said when we do bod mass, right, we always do our brackets first. So this equals 11.2% minus 8.5%. Remember that if you put the percentage signs in, you must convert your decimal into a fraction, I mean not into a fraction, into a percentage by multiplying it by 100. Okay, that's quite important. So what you do here is you just always multiply by 100 to get from a decimal into a percentage. Okay, so now, we say 11.2 minus 8.5, and it gives us the textiles are 2.7%, right? 2.7% of the other category. Okay, so out of this little 11.2%, textiles makes up 2.7%. Okay, so now we've basically calculated what that is. So let's move on to 5.1.4. So 5.1.4 says calculate in tons. That's important because we see here, this is in tons, they want the answer in tons. The total amount of plastic recycled in 2015. So if we go to the pie chart over here, we see that it says 3.4% of this 91.16 million tons is plastic. So what we do, is we say, okay, I have 3.4%, and I'm gonna multiply that by 91.16 million, okay? So I want to find out what is 3.4% of 91.16 million, right? That's what I'm gonna calculate, because that's gonna tell me how much of the recycling 
is plastic, right? And we, that is going to give me an answer in tons. Okay, so now you could be thinking like, Margie, why did you write 91.16 million as opposed to writing it out as like, like this? Because remember, if you go from putting a little M representing million and you want to actually write it fully out, you have to times it by a million, right? Which is a one with six zeros. So it's going to be like this, right? You could write it like this or you can write it like this, whichever. Neither of them are incorrect. They're just different ways of representing something. This one has just got a little M and we put a decimal. This one's got no M, so we write it out in full. Okay. So if we want to find out how much plastic there is, we say 3.4% times 91.16, right? And that gives us an answer of 3.09944 million tons. Okay. So that's how much of the total recycling is actually plastic recycling. You could also do it over here, right? Where you could convert this. We could con Sorry, I'm just going to do it underneath here. You can convert this by timesing it by a million if you want to write it out in its full numeric form, right? You could times that by a million, okay? And that would be 3099440 tons, right? So both of these answers are correct. You'll get your marks either way. One is just writing it with a little million sign, so we can put in decimal. Here we're just writing it out in full. Same answer, same amount of marks you get for both, okay? So that is that question done, right? We just found out the, the tons, the total amount of tons, of plastic recycling that form part of this total amount, okay, which is 3.0994 million tons. You can round this off if you want. You don't have to. You could, and I, in this case, I wouldn't, um, just because you want to be as specific as possible. You could round it off to 3.10 million tons, right? If you know that that nine over there is above five, so you round that off to 3.1 million tons, but this is perfectly fine. You'll get all your marks. Okay. So 5.1.5 says, give one possible example of a product that could be recycled under the metals category. Okay. So there's lots of things in our everyday lives that we um, have that are made of metal. One could be sort of like um, your tins, right? That you have like baked beans or sweet corn or whatever. Tins, you could have cans that we drink like Coke out of or whatever. Um, and you could have motor vehicle parts, like some of the paneling is often uh, made from metal. You could also have household appliances like your toaster, that sort of thing, right? So I'm just going to say here, tins and cans. They only are asked for one, but I just put two just for the lols, but you only, you can put one, okay? They're just trying to understand, they want to ask you, they're asking you whether you understand what a metal is. It's a general knowledge question more than it is necessarily a maths question, okay? So then it says here for 5.1.6, state another type of graph that could be used to represent the, the data above. So now, the data that we have here is a pie chart, right, which shows percentages. But instead of showing it in a circle, we could actually just show it in like a bar, right? We could show it in a bar like this. Let me just make sure you can see what I'm doing. Cool. So you could do it in a bar like this and you could just split it up the same way that we did over there in the circle. And then you say, okay, this is um, your paper, which is, you know, 49.7%. Okay, I haven't drawn this to scale, but it's, just, it's instead of doing a circle, you just do it in a bar. So you could do this as, it's called a stacked bar graph right? And that probably would be the best way to do it. You could just say a bar graph, right? I think a stack bar graph is a bit more accurate just because it gives you that sort of cumulative feel that this whole bar, this whole bar here, right? When you add it all up, is going to be 100%. Same as the pie chart that we had over there for the, the total amount of recycling, okay? So that's what I would do for that one. Now, let's flip over. I'm just going to go into a new page for 5.1.7. Okay. Um, so it's important here, like, 
when you when you're doing this because you could say okay i understand why it's a stacked bar graph but you might have thought of a different type of graph you might have said like a line graph or something like that but remember we want to show this cumulative feel of what makes up the recycling right so a line graph would just be like you know, it would just show a line of the differing amounts for each of the different um, categories. But you want to show that it accumulates to 100%, okay? And that's why a bar graph, a stack bar graph, is a good option here, okay? So let's now go on to 5.1.7. Now, 5.1.7 is probably the most difficult question of this question, but it's not too bad, right? We just need to make sure that we understand what is going on. Okay, so it says determine as a decimal, that's important because if we don't put it as a decimal, we'll lose a mark. The probability, remember probability means likelihood. How likely is it that it's going to happen, right? Of randomly selecting a material in the other category that is not textiles. So it's basically saying, if I have a big pile of the other recycling, right? So this 11.2, I have a big pile of it. It's made up of all these different categories. Do you agree with me? I don't know why I'm asking you whether you agree with me. You cannot say whether you agree with me or not, but I hope you agree with me. It's made up of these different categories, okay? And if I randomly pick something from that other pile, it could be one of these five categories. So the question is asking, if I randomly pick something from that pile, what is the probability, what is the likelihood that it will be a textile? will be anything but a textile, right? So it, it can be anything. It can be rubber, it can be wood, it can be food, it can be printer waste cartridges, but they don't want it to be a textile. So the probability that it's in any of these four categories, but not a textile, that's important, that not they even capitalize for us, not a textile, okay? So this is how we work our probability, right? We say, what is the event we want? The event or events that we want. Events we want over... The possible events, right, that we can get from, from doing this exercise or from picking something from this other category, right? So the events that we want is basically, it's everything except for the, that little percentage textiles, right? So it's basically the rubber, which is 1.7, and the wood, and the food, and the printer cartridges. So it's basically saying the, this is the percentage, right, that is attributed to each of these different categories. So we're saying all of the categories except textiles, right? So the events we want, the probability, the, the percentage that is attributed to them are these little percentages, right? So it's saying of the 11.2, that's how much is made up of each of those categories and those are the events we want. We don't put textiles at the top, because we don't want textiles, right? It's not the one we want. But the possible events is everything and other, right? Which includes textiles. So it's this 11.2, right? It's saying, if I have other, what is the total, right? What is the, the percentage attributed to other? The possible events is 11.2. The events I want is everything except for textiles, Okay. Now, we know that that's 8.5%. You can check me again, but we actually did that calculation over there, right? So it's 8.5% over 11.2%, right? So it's saying, what is the probability of getting any other subcategory of other except for textiles, okay? Then we put that into our calculator, okay? And make sure you type it in correctly. And it wants it as a decimal. So it's 0 0.7589. So it's going to be 0. Let me say 8928, whatever. Which equals 0 0.76. Because 8 is greater than 5. So it rounds 5 up to 6. So that is the probability of getting what we want. And the thing we want is anything, any material, other then textiles, right? Any, it's just randomly selecting material in the other category that is not textiles. Okay, and that is our answer there. Okay, so that is the second last question, right, of this paper. And the next one, the next video we'll do is 5.2 and then we will be done. Okay, perfect.